Well, hello everybody on YouTube land and welcome to episode 15 of my 1974 Ford Cortina Mark III restoration. Um, just enjoying a cup of tea in the workshop with one of my various Cortina mugs. You saw a close-up shot of earlier on. I have a few of those with different pictures of Mark III's etc. Um, just wanted to do a bit of an introduction. Um, first off to say thank you very much indeed for everybody that subscribed to the channel. Um, last time I looked I think it's 530 of you so thank you very much for that. Um, amazing response to how many views the channel's had so far. Um, exceeded my wildest dreams when I first put it on. I thought to myself maybe one or two hundred people might be interested and I might get sort of you know hundred or a couple of hundred views. Um, I looked yesterday and it's over 79,000 views on the channel, which is incredible. So thank you very much indeed to everybody that's following the slow process of the restoration of mine. I know Pete knocks them out much, much quicker, um, both the videos and obviously the cars. I think he's produced um, virtually three cars in the amount of time it's taken to build this baby. Um, obviously we're all approaching them in different ways. Um, Pete always has like a time frame for building his, whereas when I started this project I didn't kind of set a time frame. Um, various reasons for that. Obviously, cars being built in a professional workshop. Um, obviously it's a professional restoration company. And Gary, that I brought it to, who runs the business, has become a really good friend over the years and obviously got to bring down panels for him to put on the car and he saw the quality of the work that I was putting into the prep of the panels uh, with the anti-rust treatments etc inside sills and box sections and all the rest of it before they were welded on um, and liked what I did and I realised that the ethos of the car was to get it as good as we could physically get it and that money wasn't a factor. That said, I'm not a multi-millionaire. Um, I live on my own for the last seven years after the fiancé I had for 12 years decided to bugger off and they go, oh, by the way, your daughter's not yours, which was kind of interesting. But there you go, that's how life can treat you sometimes. So, um, having gone through hell with that one, and being on my own, obviously I have to fork out all the bills by myself. Um, so, not having a massive pot of money, I have to work a lot, and then save up a lot, and then pay for bits to be done on the car, which is why my restoration it's taking a very, very long time. Um, she came in the workshop in 2012, and we're now in January, actually, what was it, July 2012. So that was when I think the first video went up, or thereabouts. Um, and then obviously, you know, I have to save up cash, and then get some work done, and then save up cash and get some work done. So um, that's why it's been a long process. Obviously, things like trying to find panels for her. Um, over the years, I've bought a lot of stuff. Uh, I've got tons of stuff tucked away. But obviously, once we stripped her down and realised just how bad the shell was, I don't think anybody else, apart from maybe Pete Crompton and possibly Mike, would have actually gone, yeah, it's worth restoring. Most people would have got rid of it uh, and said it's beyond saving, it's not worth it, it's going to cost a fortune. Well. It wasn't beyond saving, obviously, um, um, and to me it was worth it. And yeah, they were right about the costing of fortune, it's not cheap. Um, something like about £8,000 worth of panel work got into this, just buying the panels. Um, you know, if you went out and bought them today, that's basically what it would cost. Thankfully, it cost me slightly less, because over the years, from way, way back, I did buy things, like the inner sills, which were January Ford ones. I picked them up back in 1980 and paid a fraction of the price of what the Express Steel reproduction ones cost today. But if you went out and bought them all, it would come to roughly around eight grand's worth of panel work in this car. Um, obviously, things like the bulkhead, I needed a brand new one and everybody was like, you can't get them, they're not available, you won't get one, you'll have to go second hand, having tried to find a decent second hand one that didn't need loads of work was seriously difficult. Um, I spent a whole year just trying to find a perfect bulkhead for her. Um, spent 500 pounds buying a bulkhead from a crashed car, and then four days later, one of my contacts went, I found probably the only original Mark III Cortina bulkhead that still exists, that was brand new old Ford stock. 
which was perfect on one side, but the side that had been exposed to the air, as it were, um, had got some rust on it, but it was only surface rust. So that was another 400 pounds. I bought that and that went into the car. So obviously, um, you know, a whole range of things have delayed the process of building this. But as I said, I wanted it to be as good as I could get it. So I didn't set a time frame. So thank you for all of those of you out there that are stuck with me on the build of this one. Um, I look forward to seeing new videos come up and all the really, really nice comments of support that you've given me. I really appreciate that. Um, Gary's done a phenomenally fantastic job of putting the car together. Everywhere we can get spot welds in as per factory, Gary's done spot welds as per factory. He's been seriously patient with me going, right, I want to spend some time prepping this panel before I give it to you to put it on. Um, the whole process has been been great. I say we've become really, really good friends um, over a period of time. And it's a testament to the quality of his work, the shell's as good as it is. Um, I appreciate the attention to detail that he puts in. He likes the attention to detail that I put in. So the whole process has just worked really well. Um, when you see this, she should be at paint. Um, been a delay with that one, obviously on the run up to Christmas, was kind of hoping to get it in before Christmas. Um, but again, you know, various things got in the way of that. So it's now got a booked in date um, and she's going off the paint. So hopefully soon you will see her coming back gleaming and looking beautiful. Fingers crossed and all going well. Um, and then we've got the rebuild bit. A um, couple of slight hurdles ahead because she has a vinyl roof from factory so I want to put a vinyl roof back on her. But obviously I kind of am trying to get it as close to production line finish as possible. And all the aftermarket vinyl roofs have got those annoying, which to me is annoying, most people are okay with it, but it bugs me, that the, the aftermarket vinyl roof seams are quite wide and obviously stick up further than the original factory ones which were like a heat sealed process. So um, that's an ongoing thing at the moment, trying to find a company out there that does heat sealing of vinyl. Um, anybody out there knows a company that heat seals vinyl, but if I gave them the vinyl roof material they could put the right seam in, uh, do let me know. If you're a company out there and you can do that, do let me know. Um, not bothered on cost, it needs to be right. And a couple of other little things that i um, still waiting to kind of track down to get 100% correct for it. But um, yeah, when it comes back from paint, it'd be great. It'd be nice to see a gleaming, shiny looking right and then the fun process of starting to put it all back together again. Um, with all the brand new bits and all the refurbed bits that I've spent hours and hours and hours on cleaning down and stripping right back and then refinishing so that they look exactly as they should look. Um, and all the lots of little tiny bits and pieces, little clips and uh, various other items that I bought way back in the day when you could just walk into any Ford dealership and go, I need a Mark III Cortina, one of these, and they just go to their parts department and give it to you that have been wrapped up and tucked away. <laughs> Um, and obviously bits that I bought over the years from people like John Blythe and Dave at Old Parts Store, Nick at Newfall Parts Centre has been great over the years. Um, and who else? Oh yeah, obviously Robin Walsh in Ireland who was an absolute star with the wheel tub fiasco where I kind of got one marked as a, as a Mark III, part numbered as a Mark III and then we put it in and found it was the Mark IV. Um, and Robin came to the rescue with a brand spanking new original world tub for me, um, which was awesome. So really, really grateful. A lot of people have helped and contributed to getting bits for this. Obviously, um, you know, I've had support from Pete, support from Mike. It's been really, really great. So I appreciate everybody out there that's um, helped to get her to the stage she is now. Um, so I'm going to have my cup of tea. And then I'll put together um, some clips, hopefully, of stuff that you haven't seen yet. Um, I realised the other day that when we did the lead loading, Gary did one side and I did the other. And it's, to be fair, the first attempt for either of us at doing it. We watched loads of tutorial videos. I kind of got the idea from the Eastwood one of what to do, because I found that a very good video to watch. And I thought, well, yeah, everybody says it's a specialist job. But I'm thinking it's like anything, none of us are born with a gift to do something. We will have to learn it. So all these specialist jobs are just 
people have learned to do them. So if other people can learn to do it, there's no reason Gary and I couldn't learn to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to say that the you know, first attempt will be as good as somebody that's done it for 40 or 50 years plus, but obviously they learn too. So never be afraid of having a go. Um, if you're going to try something, if you're restoring a car yourself, or you're thinking of restoring a car yourself, it can be a daunting task, especially when you look at a shell as bad as this was and go, it's rust everywhere, where the hell do you start? But if you watch videos with people doing it that are doing it right, then obviously I find visually watching something is a lot easier to learn how to do it. And yeah, you'll make mistakes, it's inevitable as you go along, it, it, first attempt, if you get it right first time, then that's amazing and you're really lucky. Generally, there are little things that go wrong, so you go, okay, is, am I happy with that or can I get it better? And if I do it again, I probably can. So as long as it's not like an expensive thing, like you bought, I don't know, 500 pound boot floor or something and then you weld it in you buggered it up and then cutting it all out is going to destroy it <laughs> to start again um, obviously start from something simple before you tackle anything really major but have a go um, you know and if you really don't have the time or the equipment because obviously you need certain specialist tools um, then obviously there's companies like this one which will do a seriously seriously good job um, I mean, obviously, Gary tailors the quality of the work to the needs of the customer and obviously also what they can afford. But if you've got a budget where you can go, want a concourse car, want everything to look super good, etc., then, you know, there are companies like this one out there that will do that for you. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoy this little clip of what I can find amongst my archive of stuff I filmed that I still haven't shown. Um, obviously ran up to Christmas at the other company I work for, um, which is my full-time job as it were really. That one's been hectic, we've had staff off and various things so I've just been putting hours in there and not really have much time to do very little else. So um, booked a week's work, uh, a week's holiday off of that one, um, so I could come down and play, so it's good. So um, as I say, thank you for your support, thank you for watching this little boring intro me kind of explaining a bit um, but I just wanted to sort of let people know why my videos were coming out a bit slower actually to be fair a lot slower than uh, Pete's does Pete obviously puts in a lot of time effort um, into managing to do the car and do the video editing and does a really good job of it all um, and for me it's just time factor of being able to do that and mainly the money factor of being able to have the cash to do the build um, so yeah, hope you enjoy the video, thank you.
Different builds there. Different tower. Mm. Yeah, that little dip. Dip in there and a, and a rounded bit there.
as you can see this is the um, lead loaded area next to the boot obviously the wing comes round and the rear scuffle comes down and you've got that lower piece there where the tab is welded in for the scuffle onto the rear wing so it's now been lead loaded and filled in with the lead everywhere and smoothed down um, obviously still got a little bit of dressing to do on it but it's a lot lot smoother um, all nice and even flowed in well so that was the first attempt at doing uh, lead loading on the Cortina and it's come up really really good Gary did this side and I did the other side up here which has now got some uh, primer on it as you can see it's almost invisible in this little tiny sort of shallow bit there but obviously wings get rubbed down um, body shop sort of skimming any little imperfections here and there so um, that was my bit which obviously I need to get in here and clean out that bit and clean it up but uh, up here as well we've done the where well, that goes on obviously we've got the straps on it at the moment because we've got the door secured because she's on the side as you can see we've got it on the chassis tilter so it's rolled over um, and again where the wing joins the roof We'll put the lead in on there, so that's all been done. Seems funny seeing her on her side, first time I've seen her on a chassis filter. So, so on that side. So basically the nice grey, perfectly rust-free doors started off in the condition that this one's in it's a brand new genuine fold door old stock panel um, as you can see there is just very very slight surface rust underneath the original fold primer because obviously they're very old doors um, so over the years they get little scuffs and scrapes and marks and then moisture kind of gets to it and you get little surfacey rusting bits so they get media blasted, they start off at this sort of stage and then they get the media blasting um, acid treatment if it needed it and obviously all this kind of staining of rusting that you can see on there is removed until it's all nice and clean and shiny and then they end up like the grey one that you've either already seen or that you've all seen after this depending on how I edit this together So as you can see we've got a brand spanking new genuine fold um, offside front door which is going on the Cortina um, and this is after I've been prepping it or part way through the prep stage I suppose I should say. Um, first off it's been sandblasted, I've done that and got it back to clean steel on all the surfaces because obviously it came with its full brown primer and even though it's been stored seriously, seriously well, and it was super, super clean, as you've seen by the shots of the edges of it. Um, not pitted or rusted in a heavy way. There were sort of little brown stains on it, a few little surfacey rusty bits. So obviously I decided it would be best to strip the whole thing, get it back to the steel, so that was done. And it's had etch primer coats go on it. Then it's gone into zinc weld through coats. And then it went into a grey coat, then it went into red oxide coats, um, then it had a, another standard grey coat on it, and now it's in graphene, which is a new product that I found in Halfords. Um, reading up on it, I was very impressed by what it says it does, so it's a new one for me to try. It's not something that I've normally added into the mix of the anti-rust uh, prep work that I do. But whenever new products come out, I always think, well, we'll give it a go and see. So um, that's going to be a sandwiched layer in there between 
the rest of the coats that go on and then obviously the body color and then the lacquer coats um, but on this one obviously I'll be getting it into body color and um, making sure that I've got it in all the vulnerable areas where when it goes to body shop they might miss with a gun or I might not be able to get into as easily so what my thought was with this one obviously if it's on the car and it's this way up you won't be able to put the door on end and the other end so you're limited with where the spray gun can get into so with um, paint mixed up in a can obviously you can get the tin uh, you know, spray tin in and you can get to angles with the door not fitted which you won't easily be able to get to with the nozzle of a spray gun because it's the arc and the, the way it gets through and the access where you can get a can in and, and spray all those areas so that's why I'll be putting in green around all the edges um, so it goes in and up there and down into the far corners turn the, the actual door itself spray in one lot let it set let it dry turn it another way spray it in turn it another way spray it in turn it upside down spray it in under there um, so that way I get lots of protection in prior to going to body shop and them doing their thing um, and then lacquering it so that's one door ready um, almost a little bit more work I want to be doing on it with the painting and prepping but it's nearly ready to be fitted on. As you can see, this is one of the doors off of the newly acquired uh, Mark III Cortina that I got off of eBay. Um, having taken it off, you can see the amount of corrosion that's on the inside part of the door where the hinges are. Quite an impressive hole there and a hole there. Um, and then obviously when the water's got in the top it's had to find its way out so it's kind of just disintegrated at the bottom and around where the hinges are. Um, which is a real shame because the actual bit where the seam is all the way down apart from when it gets to the bottom corner is really really good and it's probably going to be too dark under there to see but the bottom of the door is in really good condition and then you come around to the edge where the lock is as you can see the corner is really good all of the bottom edge of the door is good all down the side of the door is really really good so it's quite a shame and she's actually still got her original little foam buffer pads that Ford factory put on um, which are rare to see on them these days. That's how original the car is. It's still retaining those little pads. And I very, very much doubt that there's many of the Mark III's out there that have got those on. You see it's got little black uh, buttons in the doors, frame, window frame part. Um, and then behind that we've got one of the doors that's been cleaned and prepped, it's been completely uh, media blasted by me. So I've got it back to really, really, really clean steel everywhere. Um, and it's having its multi anti-rust coats going in. Um, and now it's in its grey primer on top of all of those. And as you can see, inside doors are absolutely spotless super smooth finish everywhere i spent a lot of time on the prep work on this getting it really really good so that when it goes off the paint which by the time you see this it will be at the paint shop at long last um then that'll be ready same all the way down the sides really 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 nice absolutely mint doors a lot of time and effort spent on those to get them right. Um, it's another spare one that I've got floating around. And as you can see, the driver's door on the bottom edge is absolutely perfect. It's a brand spanking new door that's been stored really, really well over the years. 
So we've got no pitting, no corrosion, no repairs, no rusting. All down the edge again, it's really, really, really nice. Got a little bit of dust, or dirt, I should say, it's gone on there while I pick it up off of my glove. I wonder what that was. Um, and I've got obviously again this end from uh, where I, up in there when you come down from the A f uh, post frame and when you've got your hinges all down in there is really really nice as well well as you can see we're in the workshop and we have the one up there that has been being built and then we pan down and we have my newly acquired one with the big hole very very clean now we've been polished um well tea cutted sort of g3 compound all over the car um and as you can see it's really nice color and come up very very shiny so two mark threes in one place and we have a little surprise if we pan around this way a third mark three yay this is my other one um obviously Needs lots of work, it's been stored for ages and ages and ages um, and outside for quite some time. So, not done it a lot of good uh, in some areas, but it's still really good in others. So, as you can see, we have a beautiful bulkhead on this one. Really, really, really nice condition. Um, it's not got any holes in it, but scuttle panel obviously not in mint condition on this. It's rotted through whilst it was stored. And, so needs some more work doing to it. Um, I'm going to get around to sorting this out because it's been patched, but it all needs sorting properly. Um, obviously, because we have a hole there, for example, where it's been cut and the post has been taken off, but I've got the panels for that, so that's not a problem. Um, so, yeah, the plus side on this one, original 1974 B-post, absolutely mint. This has never been repaired it's never had any cutting out and welding put in it into this one this is totally original down here it's really really nice as you can see the b post is in superb condition it really is awesome on this particular shell so giving it a good clean down sandblasted and, and obviously rubbed it all down and then painted it when i got it back so i spent a few hours on the car when we covered it from where it's been stored and started cleaning it up and it's already looking really really good in the areas that have been cleaned back um, nice one is the roof is superb and then come up there there's no holes no welding no repairs needing doing gutters almost perfect apart from a little tiny bit that's eaten in just there but other than that gutters are fine all the way along that's cleaned up really beautifully uh, it's nice and original from 74 it's not been changed comes down goes into there nicely this arch is good inner tubs perfect on this one outer tubs perfect on this one as well um i've had this shell a long while now um so obviously it needs work it needs like cleaning up or staining down in there front foot wells are bad on this one they need to be replaced um there's a sort of like green gungy moss and stuff grown all over the nice red oxide which was gleaming when it was put on but uh and all the inside of the roof was all cleaned down and gray zinc but only had a, i think one maybe two max thin coats put on so it's, it's rusted a little but it's not bad so yeah i thought i'd give you this little treat of seeing three so we have one up there one over there and this one, I thought three Mark 3's together would be a nice little one for you to have a look at. The other one that we have, or that I have. So, Mark 3 number 1, Mark 3 number 2, and Mark 3 number 3, my newly acquired one. So, three Cortinas. Um, so inside, not too bad really. It's the front foot wells that have suffered the worst with the rust issues down in there, so they'll need to be done. This is because of it being stored outside and filling up with water. And see when it was originally stored, the floor in this one was perfect. Um, it was inside for a bit, and then the person that was storing it for me had to put it outside 
Um, didn't have a cover on it, which I thought it would have done, but it didn't. So obviously water will get in anyway. Even if it's covered or not, it tends to blow in. So we need to do the four pounds on. They'll need sorting out. But um, these are going off now to go into secure storage units that I've rented. So that's going into a container somewhere different from where I normally keep my containers because they didn't have one available at the time. So that's going into a shipping container on a different site to where I normally use. But um, check them out and I'm happy with them. And then green one over there will be doing the same in the one next to it. So that would be handy. Um, so, and then we'll obviously we carry on working on that one up there. So, once they're under cover and they're nice and dry and secure, they all sit in there and they won't deteriorate anymore until it's time to start working on them. So, once project number one is done, we'll be doing... Project number two or project number two? I don't know. It'll either be that green one or it'll be this one. I'm not sure which. Haven't decided yet. Um, but obviously, you know, the plan is obviously finish the first one and then start on one of these two shells at some point in the future. So hopefully uh, you've enjoyed a quick look at this one and seeing the three of them together, which is nice there and there and there at the angle so you can sort of see three there we go See, she's still got her original Ford factory applied sill badge on here. And then when you come along, we've got a little tiny bit of rust just at the edge of the step where it meets the sloping panel of the A pillar. And when it comes to the A pillar, it's absolutely incredible. It's completely solid. There's no rust, corrosion, any problems with it at all. It's got its original little round button for the courtesy light. Rubber's obviously rotted over the years. I can't believe how good and solid this A-post is all the way from the bottom right up to the top. A little tiny bit of surface rust staining there but it's solid. Again where the lip is and it comes round it's all nice and Ford's big news of course is the Cortina now available in 35 different versions. The weight of the new bodies offset by more powerful engines and there's much more room inside.